Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be learning about the skull. The skeleton of the head is called the skull. It consists of several bones that are joined together to form the cranium. The term skull also includes the mandible or the lower jaw, which is a separate bone. The skull can be divided into two main parts. The calvaria or the brain box is the upper part of the cranium which encloses the brain. The facial skeleton constitutes the rest of the skull and includes the mandible. Now let's look at the bones of the skull. The skull consists of 28 bones which are named as follows. The calvaria or the brain case is composed of 14 bones including 3 paired ear ossicles which are located inside the ear. Now the 14 bones include paired and unpaired bones. Now let's look at the paired bones. This is the parietal bone. This is another parietal bone. These two are paired bones. Now the next paired bone is the temporal bone that you see right here. The other temporal bone is right here. The malleus incus and stapes are the three paired ear ossicles that is located inside the ear. Moving on to the unpaired bones, the bone you see here is the frontal bone. It is an unpaired bone. Now the bone we see here beginning from here these sutures this is the occipital bone this entire thing is the occipital bone the next two unpaired bones are the sphenoid and the ethmoid bone they are located comparatively to the inner side of the brain box the mnemonic that can be used to remember the 14 bones of the brain case is PT miss of Saturday evening. P stands for the parietal bone, T for the temporal, M for the malleus, I for the incus and S for the stapes. The malleus, incus and stapes are the ear ossicles. These five bones are the paired bones. Now the O stands for the occipital bone, F for the frontal, S for the sphenoid and E for the ethmoid bone. These four bones are the unpaired bones. Moving on to the bones of the facial skeleton, we have 14 bones. They are also comprised of paired and unpaired bones. The paired bones include the maxilla, which is the bone you see right here. This is the maxilla, this entire thing. Similarly, on the other side, this is the other paired maxilla. Now the next paired bone is the zygomatic bone which you can see right here. This is the other paired zygomatic bone. The next paired bone is the nasal bone which you can see right here. This is one nasal bone and this is the other nasal bone. The next paired bone is the lacrimal bone that you see right here. The other lacrimal bone is the one you see right here. The palatine bone that you can see right here is another paired bone. This is one palatine bone and this is another palatine bone. The inferior nasal concha that you see right here is a paired bone. You can see another structure similarly on the other side. Moving on to the unpaired bones, this structure is called the worma. The mandible is another unpaired bone. To remember the 14 bones of the facial skeleton, we have the mnemonic New pizza makes me very lively. N stands for the nasal bone, P for the palatine, I for the inferior nasal concha, 
Z for the zygomatic, M for the maxilla, M for the mandible, V for the warmer, L for the lacrimal bone. Now the first four are the paired including the lacrimal bone, the mandible and the warmer are the unpaired bones. Now let's look at the methods of study of the skull. The skull can be studied as a whole. The whole skull can be studied from the outside or externally in different views. Firstly, we have the superior view or the norma verticalis. Second, we have the posterior view or the norma occipitalis. Then we have the anterior view or the norma Frontalis. This is the lateral view or norma lateralis. Finally, we have the inferior view or the norma basalis. Now let's look at some of the peculiarities of the skull bones. The base of the skull ossifies in cartilage while the skull cap ossifies in membrane. Now the ossification that is the bone formation is of two types intramembranous ossification and endochondral ossification. The base of the skull ossifies by endochondral ossification that is it ossifies in cartilage while the skull cap has intramembranous ossification that is it ossifies in membrane. At birth the four angles of the parietal bone have membranous gaps or fontanelles. These allow the overlapping of bones during vaginal delivery if required. These also allow the skull bones to increase in size after birth for housing the delicate brain. Some skull bones have air cells in them and are called pneumatic bones. Example, the frontal bone and the maxilla. The frontal bone and the maxilla have air cells in them and are called pneumatic bones. They reduce the weight of the skull. They maintain the humidity of the inspired air. They give resonance to the voice. And these may also get infected resulting in sinusitis. The skull bones are united mostly by sutures. Now let's move on to the exterior of the skull. First we will be looking at the norma verticalis or the superior view. Now I am holding the bone in such a way that the frontal bone is facing superiorly while the occipital bone is facing inferiorly. This is the norma verticalis or the superior view of the skull. When viewed from above the skull is usually oval in shape. It is wider posteriorly than anteriorly. The shape may be more nearly circular. Now let's look at the bones which are seen in the norma verticalis. The upper part of the frontal bone is anterior. The uppermost part of the occipital bone is posterior while the parietal bone is on each side. Moving on to the sutures. We have the coronal suture. It is placed between the frontal bone and the two parietal bones. The suture crosses the cranial vault from side to side and runs downwards and forwards. The sagittal suture is placed in the median plane between the two parietal bones. Finally, the lambdoid suture lies posteriorly between the two parietal and occipital bones. Now looking at some other named features of the skull. Firstly, we have the vertex which is the highest point on the sagittal suture. The bregma or the anterior fontanella is the meeting point between the coronal suture and the sagittal suture. In the fetal skull, this is the site of a membranous gap called the anterior fontanelle which closes at 18 to 24 months of age. It allows the growth of the brain. The lambda or the posterior fontanella 
is the meeting point between the sagittal and the lambdoid sutures. In the fetal skull, this is the site of the posterior fontanella which closes at birth to 2 to 3 months of age. The parietal tuber or eminence is the area of maximum convexity of the parietal bone. This is a common site for the fracture of the skull. The temporal lines begin at the zygomatic process of the frontal bone, arch backwards and upwards and cross the frontal bone, the coronal suture and the parietal bone. Over the parietal bone, there are two lines, superior and inferior. Traced anteriorly, they fuse to form a single line. Traced posteriorly, the superior line fades out on the posterior part of the parietal bone. But the inferior temporal line continues downwards and forwards with the zygomatic arch. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my upcoming videos on the skull, please refer to my channel playlist given in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.